So over San Diego Comic-Con weekend, Evan Brooks, one of the lead designers of the Transformer brand at Hasbro, did a Q&A with the fans and took a bunch of questions. And a lot of stuff was discovered. A lot of stuff was learned. And what we're going to do is we're going to probably break these down into different parts throughout the next couple of days here on the Transformer Slag podcast because there is so much to talk about, a lot of juicy information. And what we're going to start with today is the discussion of the future of the Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition. So this was a subline, a small little subline of a subline that was created within Studio Series that kind of creates toys based off of the video game related brands of Transformers. Just like how we have Studio Series 86, which was born out of the side of Studio Series. Now we have the Gamer Edition stuff. And up to this point, we have deluxe classes of Bumblebee, Barricade, and Cliff Jumper, and we have Voyagers of Optimus Prime and Megatron. All of those based off of those Activision, High Moon, War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron games across the various platforms. So Evan took a bunch of questions, and uh, it was pretty interesting, some of the stuff that was asked and the answers that we got. So the first thing they asked was, for the Gamer Edition, is it limited just to War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron, or are all Transformer games included in this? And what was amazing, and I love what they said here, they said pretty much all of it is included. Hasbro owns the rights to all of that stuff. They'd love to do stuff in relation to the Devastation game, uh, maybe doing some Transformers with cell shading to match how they looked in the Devastation game. It sounds like, and I'm, I'm just going to be coming off of here for a moment, it sounds like a lot of the ideas that they have could also just be very similar to what they do with Buzzworthy Bumblebee, where you could do a lot of very video game colored repaints. And I saw that with NECA. NECA was like notorious for that in a good way, where they would have all these different licenses to Batman and the horror series stuff and Aliens and Predators, and they would do Nintendo repaints of them with Nintendo styled boxes. And if they want to do something like that, sign me up. So like they said, like, you know, Devastation, which has a very cell shaded kind of look to it in the game, maybe taking some of those previously existing molds that they already have and giving them some extremely high premium repaints that give them a cell shaded kind of look to them. They even joked about Mystery of Convoy, Convoy no Wazo, you know, the old extremely difficult Famicom Nintendo game and how, well, they have a new Ultra Magnus mold. And they have the mold from Rodimus for Kingdom, which were two characters featured in that game. They could do like a very like dot matrixy, you know, 8-bit kind of coloring onto them to kind of emulate that and make those. And they could do those things. They even said, you know, N64 with the trans metals and the, and the PlayStation game, something we literally just played uh, 24 hours ago on the live stream. So it's something where even with that, with the molds that they could have at their disposal in the future, they could potentially do something that matches that low polygon N64 PlayStation era kind of stuff. So there's a lot of fun that could be done there. But the one thing that they said is most of those games are totally fine. The only ones that might be an issue, they said, is if they want to make video game toys out of the movie stuff, because then that falls into car licenses and then they have to talk to Paramount and that's where they have to go back and forth with that. But pretty much everything else is free range and they could go crazy with that. Uh, and then someone followed up the question, is there a possibility for the re-releases of the Activision High Moon games, especially now that we have these toys out there? And they said, and this was amazing, I didn't even realize this, sadly, apparently Activision, Activision isn't sure where the hard drives are that they have the game stored on with its original build which is crazy when you think about that. Uh, it's kind of frustrating. It's probably because between the buyout from Microsoft and going through Xbox and all that stuff, uh, stuff is getting moved around and they don't know what building it's in. It's probably somewhere, but they just don't know where it is right now. But when they do figure it out, it's probably an easy game to put onto Game Pass and we'll make it happen. So what it sounds like is it's lost right now. They'll probably find it. And when they do, it's going to be a Microsoft exclusive thing. So just keep that in mind and probably on Game Pass. Just take from that what you will. Did this impact the process of making the Gamer Edition stuff? Because they didn't have access to that stuff. Um, Sam Smith, who was one of the main people behind it, had a lot of, uh, had a lot of the uh, original CADs for these characters already, but they were in black and white. So he kind of had to work off of that, but he also had the games from the previous versions. 
on PlayStation and Xbox. So he kind of just booted those up and kind of based the colors off of that with the old black and white cat images that he had from the previous generation of Hasbro people that were working on the game from their cats. So it is what it is. Um, they also said that uh, High Moon or Activision have any involvement with Gamer Edition. Unfortunately, they didn't. A lot of those people have moved on since then onto other brands and stuff. They actually said that this whole Gamer Edition idea was originally spawned because of what was happening with Star Wars Black Series. Star Wars Black Series was doing all these video game exclusive characters and video game exclusive ideas. And the team was just like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did that for Transformers? You know, we have all these molds, we have all these ideas, and we have all these great games. Wouldn't it be cool to kind of also celebrate that in our premium, you know, studio series line? So that's pretty awesome. Uh, then they, one of the fans asked, well, since you're doing Studio Series 86, Studio Series Gamer Edition, is there a possibility for Studio Series Comic Book Studio? And uh, that led to a small back and forth. And ultimately, and they said, you know what? Well, they are considered a studio, so it is a possibility. It uh, sounds like an interesting idea, they pretty much said. Uh, doesn't confirm and or deny anything, but uh, it is something. Uh, they also said, would there be any other interesting video game collaborations they would like to do in the future? And they said the one that they would like to see, obviously, is Nintendo, since Nintendo has already par uh, partnered up with, with Lego in the past. It would be really cool to do some Nintendo-related stuff. They even mentioned, and this was interesting, the extremely rare story, not many people talk about this, the Super Nintendo Transformer game that never happened. Uh, back in the G2 era of 1994, Argonaut Studios, which were the people who made Star Fox and worked very closely with Nintendo back then, um, they had the license to do a G2 Transformer game. And the rumor was for years the, the game Vortex was pretty much the build before the license was lost on it. But apparently they had the license. They were trying out some stuff. In the end, uh, they didn't do it because G2 wasn't doing very good in toy sales. And they felt that by the time the game would come out in, let's say, like 95, 96, uh, that would have already been the end of that. And of course, by 95, 96, we were in a Beast Wars era. So kind of a smart move on Argonaut's part. But they mentioned, hey, you know, there was plans to do a Super Nintendo Transformer. Maybe we could do something with that. But, uh, you know, again, now that... You know, there's going to be different partnerships, could be with Sega, could be with Microsoft with the future uh, ownage of uh, the War of Cybertron, Fall of Cyber Fall of Cybertron stuff. They already did stuff with Sony, with the PlayStation one. Anything is possible. Uh, one fan mentioned maybe even doing something Pokemon related and collecting stuff. And then, of course, Evan respond, ah, the dream. <laughs> so I think they'd love to do something Pokemon related. It's such a shame because Hasbro used to have the po the toy Pokemon license for the longest time. And uh, then they ask them, um, and again, this is another one too, like, um, so again, covering the comic talk, you know, first we had 86, now we have Gamer Edition. Would it be possible to do that? And they said, well, we'll see. We will see. Again, people seem very interested in seeing some of those comic exclusive characters get toys, but we're kind of already seeing that. I mean, we had that with Cascade and, uh, and Javelin. So I think we're going to get, you know, our comic stuff one way or another. It doesn't have to be in a studio series setting. It is just a possibility. And the final question they asked was, if you can make an, a gamer edition figure, your any, anything, no limits, what would it be? And Evan said a Titan class Trypticon or a fall of Cybertron Compaticons done with today's engineering. So those are two very juicy ones, man, uh, to do the, the Nemesis, but the Trypticon one, that'd be pretty crazy. So that's, uh, again, some nice little pieces here and there of the Transformers uh, Gamer Edition and what we could see in the future. Again, I like the idea that they're willing to even do like just taking pre-existing molds and giving them crazy repaints to throw back to some of those old things. Like, you know, we could even look at the Headmasters game that they did back in the day where it was a Fortress Maximus but it was colored like Metroplex and looks exactly like Metroplex. Maybe it could be a an excuse for them to reissue the old Metroplex Titan class and just call it Gamer Edition, <laughs> Gamer Edition Headmasters Fortress Maximus, but it's actually Metroplex. But you get to use the Fortress Maximus, Maximus uh, trademark. Who knows? Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. This is all pretty exciting and fun. We, there's so much more stuff with this Q&A. We're going to cover it throughout the rest of next week and everything. So stay tuned with that. Really cool stuff here on the Transformers Flag podcast. Tomorrow is the live stream. 
I apologize for people that didn't catch the live stream yesterday. We did a quick little video game, having fun live stream there, just testing out some new stuff for the future of the Transformer Slack podcast, have some fun with some Transformer video game stuff and the other recording areas in the house. Let me know what you think about that too. Anyways, guys, take care. We'll talk to you real soon tomorrow on the live stream.